Hey everyone, I'm Tiff and I love words. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight next to this uh, tiny little lamp. We are going to take a book off the shelf, huh? You like that? Um, and read some Keats tonight. This book is actually um, the poetical work works of Keats. It is from about 1907. It's one of those undated older copies, so you never do know um, when it was officially published. I got this book, um, luckily, from this tiny little bookstore called Browser's Books in Oregon. If you're there, check it out. It's one of those places where you have to, like, step around piles and piles of books, so also known as heaven. Um, tonight we're going to start with a couple sonnets by John Keats, some of his lesser known works, and then we are going to jump into his more famous works and end with my very favorite. So I hope you're ready. Here we go. Sonnets by John Keats. To my brother George. Many the wonders I this day have seen, the sun when first he kissed away the tears that filled the eyes of morn and the laureled peers, who from the feathery gold of evening lean, the ocean with its vastness, its blue and green, its ships, its rocks, its caves, its hopes, its fears, its voice mysterious, which whoso hears must think of what will be and what has been. Even now, dear George, while this for you I write, Cynthia is from her silken curtains peeping so scantly that it seems her bridal night. And she her half-discovered revels keeping, but what without the social thought of thee would be the wonders of the sky and sea? Kind of got a little naughty with that one. Okay, the next sonnet we're going to read is written on the day that Mr. Leigh Hunt left prison. What though for showing truth the flattered state, kind Hunt was shut in prison, yet has he, in his immortal spirit, been as free as the sky-searching lark and as a late minion of grandeur, think you he did wait? Think you he not but prison walls did see, till so unwilling thou unturnest the key? Ah, no, far happier, nobler was his fate. In Spencer's halls he strayed, and bowers fair, culling enchanted flowers, and he flew with darling Milton through the fields of air, to regions of his own his genius true took happy flights. Who shall his fame impair when thou art dead and all thy wretched crew? So the last sonnet we're going to read is to a friend who sent me some flowers. Oh, I'm sorry. To a friend who sent me some roses. Let's be very accurate. <laughs> As late I rambled in the happy fields, what time the skylark shakes the tremendous the tremulous dew from his lush clover covet when anew adventurous knights take up their dented shields i saw the sweetest flower wild nature yields a fresh blown musk rose twas the first that threw its sweets upon the summer graceful it grew as is the wand that queen tiana yields and as i feasted on its fragrancy I thought the garden rose it far excelled, but when, O oh Wells, thy roses came to me, my sense with their deliciousness was spelled. Soft voices had they that with tender plea whispered of peace and truth and friendliness unquelled. That's from the poetical works of John Keats. So now we're going to dive into three of his most famous poems and the last one is my favorite so you guys all probably heard this and had to read it and analyze it in high school but it's interesting to take a new look at it and actually um, hear it with new ears kind of older in life like I am this is Ode to a Grecian Urn thou still unravished bride of quietness 
Thou foster child of silence and slow time, Sylvan historian who canst thus express, A flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape, Of deities or mortals, or of both? In Tympe or the dales of Arcady, What men or gods are these, what maidens loth? What mad pursuit, what struggle to escape, What pipes and trembles, what wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter, Therefore ye soft pipes play on, Not to the sensual ear, but more endeared, Pipe to the spirit deities of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, Nor ever can those trees be bare, Bold lover, never, never cast thou kiss. Thou, though winning near the goal, yet do not grieve. She cannot fade, though thou hast not thy bliss. Forever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Ah, happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves, nor ever bid the spring adieu. And happy melodist unwearied, forever piping songs, forever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever painting and forever young, all breathing human passion far above. That leaves a heart high sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar or mysterious priest leadest thou that heifer lowing at the skies, and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore, or mountain built with peaceful citadel, is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And, little town, thy streets forevermore will be silent, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can ever return. O oh, Attic shape, fair attitude with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed, thou silent form doth tease us out of thought, as, as doth eternity cold pastoral. When old age shall this generation waste, thou shall remain in midst of other woe. Then ours a friend to man, to whom thou sayest, Beauty is truth, truth beauty, that is all ye know on earth, and all ye need to know. That was Ode to a Grecian Urn. Okay, the next poem we are going to read is one of his other most famous poems. It is called On First Looking into Chapman's Homer. Much have I traveled in the realms of gold, and many goodly states and kingdoms seen. Round many western islands I have been, Which bards in fealty to Apollo hold. Oft of one wide expanse had I been told That deep-browed Homer ruled as his demands. Yet never did I breathe its pure serene Till I heard Chapman speak out loud and bold. Then felt I like some watcher of the skies When a new planet swims into his kin. Or like stout Cortez with, when, with eagle eyes, He stared at the Pacific, and all his men Looked at each other with a wild surmise, Silent upon a peak in Darien. That was on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Okay, we're going to read one more poem. That's my very favorite. It's actually... Um, a poem that was published uh, long after Keats passed away. Keats was born in, in excuse me, 1795 in London, and he died shortly after at the age of 25 in 1821 of tuberculosis. His death um, rang through the world. Poets and artists and writers and just lovers of art alike um, all terribly, terribly upset by his death. There was a lot of back and forth about who was going to be the one who got to create his headstone. 
Um, Oscar Wilde threw his hat in the ring for that one. And Oscar Wilde actually also, um, I think for most of his uh, published poems, dedicated them to John Keats and his memory. So, if you want to learn uh, more about John Keats, this part of the process is me researching to see what poem I'm going to read for my next podcast episode, Tiff Loves Words. Uh, you can play along with me, suggest some things while we learn a little more about John Keats and dive into his lesser known works. With that, I'll leave you with his most famous poem, one of uh, his very last poems ever written, Bright Star. Bright star, would I were steadfast else as thou art, not in lone splendor hung aloft the night, and watching with eternal lids apart, like nature's patient, sleepless air might. The moving waters at their priest-like task of pure abolition round earth's human shores, or gazing on the new soft-fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors. No, yet still steadfast, still unchangeable, pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast, to feel forever in its soft fall and swell, awake forever in a sweet unrest, still still to hear her tender taken breath, and so live ever, or else swoon to death. All right, thanks so much for listening.